Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on connecting an Oracle Utilities Enterprise SaaS environment to the object storage that you're using uh, in order for the application environment to be able to write and read files from object storage. So this applies to customer cloud service, meter solution cloud service, work and asset cloud service. We'll start with an overview of, quick overview of the instructions. And this uh, scenario will be demo, and it will assume that you are fairly familiar with the concepts of object storage and familiar with uh, navigating through customer clouds, cloud service or the, any OUAF-based application, Oracle Utilities Application Framework. So if we take a look at the steps, essentially what we do here is gather some information from your Oracle Cloud infrastructure or your or object storage uh, part of the system. And that includes getting some OCIDs and namespace values. And we'll copy those in. I'll show you how you get those. Um, we create one new object there. Uh, the scenario here is that we have a new application environment and we'll call it a CCS a Dev02 environment. So we're gonna create an application user uh, in for object storage that maps to that uh, new environment and we'll capture the OCID for that. Then we'll do a couple things in the application environment itself, including creating a key ring and um, grabbing the public key from that key ring. And then finally, um, using the information that we grabbed in steps one and two to complete extendable lookup, lookups that uh, are the mapping in the application back to object storage to particular compartments. Okay, so let's start out by gathering the information from uh, the Oracle Cloud infrastructure, starting with the tenancy information. So I'm gonna switch over to my Firefox. I'm just have gone into the OCI object storage area. To get the data we need, we're gonna to have to go down first to administration tenancy details. Okay, here's the tenancy details. This happens to be an internal environment, uh, but yours will look very similar. At, at the top, OCID, we're gonna copy the uh, tenancy information from that OCID, and it will look something like that long unreadable string um, and that's part first thing we need second thing is we need the object storage namespace so i'll grab that uh, and i'll slap it into that document okay then uh, we need for the appropriate compartments we need the ocid of those compartments so I'm gonna go back in, and now I'm gonna switch over to the identity section for compartments. Remember that um, we create the shared compartment uh, for use by all the environments, and then we separate it out by production and non-production in our basic setup. You may have a different, uh, you may have split these in a, in a different way, and that's fine. The concept remains the same that you'll want to grab, uh, go into the, comp uh, the compartment you want to map to, the high level compartment, and grab an OCID from it. So I went into the, in this case, CCS shared. I'm going to copy the OCID from that uh, shared compartment. I'm going back to my doc and slap in the shared OCID. And then uh, in this case, it's a Devo2 scenario. So we're gonna get the non-production uh, compartment. I'll go back to that area. We're gonna go back to compartments. I want non-production this time. I'm gonna copy the OCID from that and put that into my document. Okay, and that completes uh, the first step that we need to do. Then we're gonna create this application user corresponding to Devo2 environment. So CCS Devo2, I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna go do that from identity, create users. We already have, in this case, dev and prod and test application users. I'm gonna create one 
for dev02. So it'll look very similar to this dev uh, user. Just, uh, you know, I'll actually copy this. So I have it handy when I say create user. That user will be CCS dev02. Description will be that. We won't use an email because there'll never be a, a direct login. This will be through an API key and uh, no tags are necessary. So we'll say create. That creates our dev02. Now, um, let's grab the ID, OC ID from dev02, our new user record. We'll copy that and put it in our file. Okay. And we need to link that user to the appropriate group so it has access to some compartments. Okay. And so we do that by going to groups. We find the group that is the appropriate one for this user. It's an application user and it's non-prod access. So it's this group. I'm gonna click on that group. And I'm gonna say add user to group. And I'm gonna add devo2. Dev and test are already there. Add devo2. Okay. And that for now completes what we need to do on the uh, object storage side. Now I'm gonna go into an application environment. We'll say that this is our dev02 environment and we need to do a couple things here. First off, and I'll go back to my instructions briefly, uh, we're now on step three. In the SAS environment, create a key ring called os-api OS keys and then we'll generate a key. So I'm gonna go in, back into that environment I'm going to navigate to key ring. We can check first if there's anything there. In a new environment, the, this, you will not find any records here. So I'm going to say add a key ring. That brings up a add dialog. And it's the OS API keys. I'll just call, give it the same description, and say save. That creates a key ring. Next we need to, on, while on this same record, we need to generate a key that creates a private key um, and we'll be able to also then uh, get a public key for it. So I'm gonna generate key. That uh, creates this record down below that we see here. Notice that it's shown as uh, today's date last day of 2019, it's inactive right now. We're gonna activate it. And you get a warning on that and say, okay, we're setting it up. And then we're gonna view the public key. That gives us a little pop-up. And we, what we wanna do is copy that entire public key. And then I'll cancel. What we're gonna do with that public key is put it back into object storage for our user. So I'm gonna click on that user and notice for a, an app, or this is our Devo2 user that we just created. I'm gonna add a public key. And that's the public key we just got for that uh, in that environment. We'll say add. And, I, and that stores the public key so that they're now linked together. And we now get our last step. Uh, so we, we copied the public key and we, so we did step four. And then in step five, we uh, create and update some extendable lookups under the file storage uh, description. So I'm gonna go back to our environment and do a navigation over to extendable lookup. There, I'm gonna search for file, and I will find, this is the one I'm after, is F1 file storage, I'm gonna click on that. What you'll find in a new environment is that we've preceded one um, extendable lookup value for the shared compartment, because we assume that every environment will need to be able to kind of connect to the shared compartment in object storage. But if you, 
uh, broadcast on that value, you'll see that a number of the fields are not filled in. And in order to fill them in, we had to do the earlier steps in this demo. But now we're in a position where we can fill these in for the shared compartment. So I will edit this record. And now I can fill in some of these values. So now it's looking for a user, and these are OC IDs that it's looking for. So first the user, and I'm gonna just copy these back from the, uh, from the document we used. So this is our user, CCS Devo2. We'll put that in the first box. Next, we need the tenancy OC ID. And We'll get that from the top one here. That's the tenancy. Then we need the shared compartment OCID. For shared, that's this one. We'll copy that. Then it's looking for the namespace, which we also got. So this value here. And then the last two are drop downs, and we should find our OS API keys that we created. That's a reference to the key ring. And then your region is dependent on where your object storage is located. Um, in the US, that would be in Ashburn. It, in other parts of the world, it might be a different region. Um, pick the appropriate region for your object storage, and you hit save. Okay, now that's all filled in. Um, the la final step that you would do is that gives us a mapping to our uh, shared compartment in object storage. What we would need to do then is add one more record, which by default we call the OS app um, file storage lookup. And so it's where the application writes, in general writes its files that are not to be shared. And um, it's an object storage uh, file adapter that's going to use. And notice it has the same fields that we just filled in. Um, so everything would be the same uh, in, in filling this out, except for the only difference would be that you'd pick up your non-prod here as in your compartment mapping. You'd pick up that value instead. And fill it in on the compartment. All the rest would be the same values that we filled in on the other, other one. And that would give you a mapping to OS uh, for your application. Uh, so you have the OS app and OS shared. And um, of course you use those, I won't save that one, but because uh, I didn't fill it all in. But um, once you have those two values, you can use OS shared and OS app in things like your batch parameters to indicate where a batch job should write a file or read a file, for example. Um, so that concludes the steps of setting up connectivity between an environment uh, in the UGBU enterprise SaaS world, uh, Oracle Utilities application framework based customer cloud service in this case, and, uh, and your object storage. And you can modify that as needed if you have a different compartment set up uh, and so forth. But the steps should be uh, all, all similar. So thank you for your attention on this one. And good luck on setting up your environments. Thanks.